Hello, and welcome to Rolling Out Star Studio. I am your host, Portia Monique, and today we have the pleasure of speaking with two of the lead cast members from The Kings of Napa, which is on TV's newest binge-worthy series. We're just going to throw that out there right quick. We're going to speak it into existence. Uh, but Ebene Noel and Isaiah Whitlock Jr., welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Bring House of Kings into the future. Look into my eyes. What do you see? A manipulator. Do you really want everyone in Napa to know that your picture perfect life wasn't as ideal as you made it seem? I come with love. Oh, yeah, and shame. Your family. It's a family. family. Watch out, Napa. Dad made me president because I have a vision. It's that mind of yours that's going to take us places. I'm bringing August down by any means necessary. If you are hiding more secrets, I will destroy you. Your mama's acting like she is the first black person to be backstabbed by her family. This mess goes back to Othello. Uh, this is not about extortion. This is about revenge. Business is hard, but family is a beast. It's about to get super saucy up in here, child. Absolutely. So, um, like I said, this is a, a new binge worthy show. I know because I watched the first episode um, and I was hooked from the trailer. So, Ebene, we'll start with you. Mm -hmm. um, tell us all about kings of napa tell us about your character and who she is so kings of napa centers on a black family who owns this vineyard in napa valley our father reginald uh, was a surgeon or is still a surgeon and started this side business and we're all happily you know going along in our different areas of um of expertise within the industry and within the business. And then the first episode hits, there's a crisis, some secrets come out and the family's turned on its head. So for my character, um, I'm the middle child, I'm the marketing genius of the family. And when this event happens, it forces me to step up into a true leadership position within the company. And you see August who is, you know, bold and creative and um, tenacious and a little stubborn have to take these talents that have served her very, very well in her previous lane and level up so that she can meet the challenge of you know, managing people and then also falling down and like, how do you get back up again? How do you lead? How do you pivot? So that's okay. what you'll see in the rest of the season. All right. And Isaiah. I play Reginald King. I'm the patriarch of the family. Uh, I'm pretty much the driving force of, uh, of this whole uh, series, Kings of Napa. And uh, a lot of my secrets uh, in life, uh, come to life uh, uh, during the show that sets everything into motion. And we get to see uh, just what people are made of, how they deal with the certain uh, 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 problems and things that come up. But I'm very impressed and I'm very happy because I, I see the, the characters, they don't sort of pull within and mm -hmm. become withdrawn. They leap out and burst out and uh, and you find that they have even more to say than what uh, you see on the screen. And uh, that to me is impressive and, and in some ways kind of important, you know, that uh, uh, we have a problem, we can handle those problems. So, um, uh, but like I said, there's a lot of secrets that I have that, that come out and, and uh, just kind of moves, moves uh, things along. Yeah, now, um, thank you for that. And as I said earlier, I was drawn from the artwork, right? So I was drawn from the initial trailer that I, that I saw. And what intrigued me the most is that the cast is gorgeous, right? So everybody on the cast is gorgeous. The background is picturesque. So Napa, I'm 
from California. So I'm a California girl and I've been to Napa Valley. Right. And so I know exactly what it looks like, but seeing it actually on screen with black people behind it um, (laughs) (laughs) is another story. Right. And so um, that was one of the things that drew me to actually want to watch. So Ebene, I'm going to ask you, what was it that drew you to this this story and um, what compelled you to want to bring it to life? Well, a lot of the things that you're saying, actually, I loved the diversity within the characters. Um, there's no one on the show that you're like, oh, they're kind of alike, they're kind of similar. We also have a very different purpose. We have very different skills and it's kind of wonderful to see this sort of pageantry of like blackness on the page um, and then to see it and to see how, we're, how they were gonna put that together drew me instantly. I love the setting of um, a, just a vineyard run by Black people. I'd never seen that before um, on television or on, on screen. And so to read something that the characters were so rich and so different from each other, and then to be in a setting where I'd never seen characters like this before, immediately I knew this was a project that I would be lucky to be a part of. And you know, the rest is history. Yeah, um, and it was definitely the intelligence for me, right? So Mm -hmm. listening to the actual cast speak and enunciate their words and think about these complex problems and and be able to articulate them on screen, um, that was another thing for me as well. Isaiah, what about you? Yeah, it, uh, uh, I was attracted to, to the character because I hadn't seen anything like 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 this, uh, and not on not only that was it was the, you know we were all sort of given that task that yes this is who you're playing but we still need to see that character we can't we don't want a stereotype of that character or we don't want that sort of image of what you think or what has been presented so here's the character but I want to see what's inside that character I want to see the nuance I want to see what's in his soul and bring that out. And that to me is where uh, things really start to work with everybody. Uh, I think the casting on the show has been fantastic, but you gotta cast people who are going to be able to handle that task and, and get it and get and get it out there. And I think we do a very good job with that. I think so as well. Now, Ebene, your character is one of my favorite characters <laughs> on the show. Um, <laughs> I love her style, um, not just physically with the clothes and everything, but the way that she thinks is very attractive to me as well. I'm a sapiosexual, so I love intelligence, right? Yes. Um, but for you, walk us through your um, interview process. Well, not necessarily interview, but yeah, how did you land the role? You said you would have been lucky to play, you know, August. Um, yeah. Walk us through your audition process is what I was looking for. Sure. So I, you know, I did an initial audition probably Feb- in, somewhere towards the end of February last year. I sent in a tape because with COVID, um, in-person casting has kind of completely shut down. Right, right. Um, there were three scenes. I think they're all from the pilot, if I remember correctly, three scenes from the pilot that they asked for. Turned that in and I got a call back. And the call back was actually on Zoom with Janine, Matthew, and um, Kim Coleman, who was the LA casting director for the show. So first of all, it was amazing just opening the Zoom because I'd never been in any audition where the showrunner, the director, and the casting director were Black. I was like, oh, this is this is different. <laughs> okay, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay, this is different. Mm-hmm. And we just, we workshopped the scenes. Uh, Matthew was really uh, kind of running it, giving notes. I was able to ask some questions. There are different ways to play. And, you know, you get a scene, there's a million ways to play it. So I just wanted to make sure that we were aligned how I was thinking about certain moments. And we just played around really for, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes. And after that, they sort of took those tapes and moved forward with all of the different processes. So in normal times, I probably would have had another in-person audition with the network, but because things were limited, they used those tapes and shortly thereafter gave me the job. Ding, 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 ding. We're happy (laughs) that you got the job. Now, Isaiah, (laughs) 
I don't know if I can unsee you as the patriarch of this family, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't, after seeing you, I don't know if I would have had someone else in mind who could have perfectly pulled off the father figure like you do. Um, walk us through your audition process as well. Uh, <clears throat> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't audition. They okay. called me, they called me up as a person who could play the patriarch uh, yeah. of the of the family. I mean, that's what it's. I mean, I think you hit it on the head. Is that this is who you see yeah. as the patriarch? This is who they saw as the patriarch. Yeah. And they called me up, and uh, I took a look at it, and uh, <clears throat> at first. I do this a lot, you know, and it's just my own insecurity. It's like, oh my God, can I play this? Can I do this? And then I get very bold about it. And it's like, yeah, I can <laughs> do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to tackle it. I can, uh, uh, all of a sudden my mind starts to work and that fear kind of goes away. And, uh, and it's like, yes, I'm going to be a patriarch of, mm -hmm. a, of a very affluent uh, African-American family in napa uh usually i'm like you know trying to steal somebody's money <laughs> <laughs> now you got all the money and they trying to steal it from you <laughs> yeah. it's like oh my god i'm gonna actually start with the money and go from there that's yeah gonna, that's gonna be quite a feat but uh but when i see myself as the patriarch of this family I couldn't see anybody else. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Here I am. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, some of your co stars, like again, I said, uh, it's a beautiful cast. Like, mm -hmm. hands down, like everybody on the cast is just gorgeous, right? Um, including the mother character, um, mm -hmm. the auntie character. So, I was looking at the first episode and they were alluding to this big secret. They didn't get to it. <laughs> Can y'all share some insight on what this big secret is? Because I'm like, where's episode number two? You know, I'm used to just binge watching. Just give, give me episode one, 101 through 108. Give them all to me. <laughs> but can you guys share some insight on, um, you know, what can we expect this season? So I know it's a lot of ins and outs, treachery and, and um, lies and, and all of that. But what can we expect? I know you can't give us the exact, but m and we'll start with you. I would say, you know, the first episode centers more so on my father's secrets. Mm. And we sort of, that's the jumping off point. But throughout the series, you'll find out that we're all carrying some little secret that's consequential <laughs> to the family and to the business. So it starts off focusing on, on, on one character. And as we, as we continue, it's like, uh, uh, nobody's innocent in this family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, what I, that's what I love about it is that, uh, you know, we show that we are human and, mm -hmm. and, uh, yes, you know, we, we have all of this, uh, to live for, uh, I mean, I, I'm 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 a surgeon. I'm I'm a doctor. This is kind of like my side gig that I'm doing very well at. But it's a beautiful thing. But uh, we all have uh, uh, secrets and skeletons in our closet, and I think that's what a lot of people are going to identify with: is that you know nobody's perfect. Uh, mm -hmm. We do the best we can. Uh, we always have done the best we can. Now we're just showing it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another aspect of the show that I love is that it kind of serves us a realness, so to speak, that this is a possible reality for us, right? So, of course, in Napa, the Brown Estate is Black-owned. Um, I believe it's called the Brown Estate. And then, you know, the McBride sisters, they have their own wine. And then um, I know a couple of other wine owners that are Black, Rodney Foster with Ida Heist Wines as well. Um, Tell us, for you, how realistic was it when you read the script into thinking that this is 
a very much potential or, or this is very much realistic and I could really see something like this playing out. Maybe it is the Brown family that it was fashioned after. I don't know. But how realistic was that for you, Ebony? Well, I think for me, very realistic, to be honest. I mean, my family is from the Caribbean. And so we're from a country where Black people do everything. We're in oh, yeah. every room, you know? Yeah. And so to to take that perspective into, into um, growing up in the States, in and out of the States, but as a Black American, mm -hmm. you know, that juxtaposition of people thinking we can't do something is always sort of bucked with how I've been raised. Yeah. Um, so to read something like this, I was like, yeah, sure. I've never seen it, but I don't doubt we could be there, you know, yeah. and even how the characters speak, how they carry themselves. Obviously they're well-traveled. Um, you know, my mom works for the U.S. Like these things just felt very familiar to me. Now the drama is, is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's large. It's outside. It's kind of <laughs> I don't want to assume that any of these poor innocent families who own these vineyards that were like, you know, trying to tell their story because I hope that maybe they're dealing with a little less drama than we are. Yeah. But, yeah. but in terms of the situation and these characters, they felt very realistic and familiar to me. Okay. Now, do both of you guys drink wine? And if so, let's talk about your favorite wines. Ebene, we'll start with you. Um, I love Italian reds. I'm a big sucker for a glass of Barolo. I love a Chianti. I also love some Spanish red wines. Those are those are my go-tos. Okay, okay. What about you, Isaiah? Do you drink wine? And if so, what's your favorite? I drink wine. I make wine. Uh, <laughs> I have even been featured in Wine Spectator. Ah, uh -uh, yes. really? Yes, yes, yes. I love I love Italian wines uh, because I was sort of introduced to Italian wines because I couldn't afford the French, but I began to realize uh, that um, uh, the Italian wines are superb. I mean, they're, they're, they're just fantastic. I do like uh, the Brunellos uh, coming out of uh, Italy and, uh, and I love uh, Pinot Noir, which from oh. Central California, uh, which is, I find very, very good. Um, and I love a glass of Cabernet. Oh really yeah well-balanced uh cabernet but yeah i have i do i drink wine yes <laughs> <laughs> you said you make wine let's get into that uh, give us some more about that you said you make wine yes i source grapes from napa and uh i do my blending in a warehouse uh here uh in uh, new jersey uh you, but i want i just want to say it, it it's not where you make it it's where you get the grapes from. So okay. I crush and ferment and blend and everything in New Jersey. But uh, I get high-end grapes uh, from a, a place called Beckstoffer, which is one of the top uh, uh, place farms in, uh, in Napa and uh, have it shipped across, uh, do it here. And I come out with a very, very, very good, good uh, wine. Okay, you want to give us a master class or something. <laughs> uh, I need a tour. I need, I need all of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I made a wine that was 80, uh, it was 40%, it, no, it was 40% Cabernet, 40% Merlot, 10% mm -hmm. Syrah to give it a little sexy kind of spice to it, 10% mm -hmm. Malbec. It was mm. a, it was all, it was outstanding. It mm. really, really was. I just wish I had some more because I drank it all. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Ebony, where did we get that from? Like, can you make you send me a bottle to watch you drink with this show? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, I got some other stuff brewing uh, that I laid it down. Uh, I keep it, you know, on a temperature control. Uh, but uh, it's very, very good. It's not bad. You just, um, you just got to know how to put it together and you got to watch it until it gets into the bottle. Okay. Um, that sounds like a, a lucrative and fun hobby. I'm serious about that masterclass. I'm going <laughs> to come find you in Manhattan. You <laughs> I'm going to find you in New York. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> um, 
As we wrap down this interview, I want you guys to just kind of tell us your favorite thing about this upcoming show. And then um, give us your your reason as to why you think we should watch. I know I'm going to be watching, but y'all give us your reason as to why you want to watch. So favorite thing and then why should we watch? Ebony, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, sure. Um, I would say my favorite thing is how diverse our show is. Honestly, it feels like a celebration of um, how multifaceted Blackness is. Mm -hmm. you know, across generation, skin tone, size, um, perspective. It's just, it feels like a, a welcoming space. We're not trying to tell you there's any one way to be. There's many ways to be, and we can be in communion, in kinship with each other, love on each other, butt heads, but triumph at the same time. Um, so that's my, my favorite thing about our show, besides, you know, the clothes. <laughs> Um, he didn't even talk about the clothes, sis. Listen. Okay, we're gonna let Isaiah go, then we're gonna talk about the clothes. <laughs> I gotta I gotta piggyback on all of that. You know, it's that it's that multifaceted uh look and the diversity where you say, you know, there is no one way. Uh uh we're 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 very we're a very complicated people. And basically we're not trying to force anything we're just putting it out there and saying this is us this is who we are mm -hmm. and uh you take us uh the way the way we are but uh i think people will find a little something in all of it that they can identify with yeah well we can't wait uh before we get into why we should watch m a i do want to touch on the fashions right quick just from the little snippet that we've seen Tell us about the fashions. Um, what can we expect? Are we looking at um, black owned designers? Are we looking at like, just get, give it to us right quick. Uh, I mean, you're gonna see the whole spectrum. Michelle Light, our costume director is a genius. She's a GT gal like me and my family. Okay. So we connect right away. Um, she dressed us like she loved us, you know, bright colors, um, a spectrum of designers, some black, designers as well. You're going to see some Fana Well, some Telfar, some Brian Atwood. Like, you're just going to see a huge range of, um, of design and also, I think, how Black people with wealth dress. Like, we don't, we don't do anything like anybody else, right? We're not going to eat the same food. We're not going to wear this dress that you might wear the same way. We're going to put our own style and our own spin on it. And I think that's, that's what you're going to see from the fashion. Love it. Okay, last question, guys. <laughs> Why should we watch? Ebony, we'll start with you first. Mm. You should watch because honestly, there's going to be no better place to be on Tuesday nights at eight, but watching Kings of Napa. It's juicy. It's addictive. It's beautiful. It's got a lot of heart. There's, there's no reason why you shouldn't watch. How about that? Okay. <laughs> and Isaiah? I think you should watch because it's, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to mm -hmm. be fun to take the ride with us. Um, and I think, uh, I think everybody will, there will be something for everybody. Uh, and I think there's a lot of stuff in the show to love. And so, uh, uh, you'll walk away feeling very, very good and, and thankful that, uh, you're getting a chance to witness us in, uh, in our journey. Well, I can't wait. As you said, Ebony, Tuesday starting, it's premiering January 11th. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's next Tuesday, 8 p.m. on OWN, the Oprah Winfrey Network. You guys be there. I'm going to be there. Um, I need to talk to somebody so I can make a guest appearance as a cousin of somebody because I look <laughs> like y'all. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, hello. To be that, uh, that long lost daughter from long time ago. I need to be one of them secrets. That's all I'm saying. You can, you can be one of my secrets anytime. <laughs> I love it. Thank it'll you guys be, so it'll much. Just be another, it'll just be another secret in the show. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you guys so much for stopping by Rolling Out Star Studio. I'm your host, Portia Monique. Take care, guys. Okay, you too. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye.